Involving the parents into school activities helped retain students. During the meetings with the parents, I always tried convincing them to allow their children to continue their education. During primary school, I emphasized the necessity of education and encouraged my students to continue education after completion of primary school. Designated BRAC staffs are appointed to track my students at secondary level. When I meet my students, I always encourage and motivate them to continue education. Most of my students complete their secondary school, but some don't. Those who finished their secondary school, some teach at the government primary school and high schools, while some work in the police. The teacher-student ratio in the non-formal BRAC schools is low compared to the formal schools. Thus, teachers spend a large amount of time with the students, which provides with an opportunity to better understand the mind of students. For the students, I try to become their friend so that they can share their feelings and personal problems with me. I also try to make a friendly learning environment. To have a friendly, fair, and open learning environment, it's important for me to understand my students and also for them to understand me. These children are like an open book. Their face reveals what is going on in their mind. Accordingly, I take necessary steps to teach them the lesson. Bragg supports and cater the needs of disadvantaged people. Bragg at secondary and university level gives stipend to poor students so that they can continue their study and establish themselves in the society. I feel Bragg is doing a wonderful job in supporting the disadvantaged children in the society. Before, parents were hesitant to enroll their children into school. And now, they are really happy and willing to enroll their children into primary school. Bragg have many different types of programs, such as Breeze School, Boaty School, Student Mentoring Program, and Skill Training for Advancing Resource that creates support system for the disadvantaged children. Before joining BRAC, I was only a housewife without any knowledge about teaching children or making lesson plan or even about teaching process. The trainings I got from BRAC taught me different ways to make learning easy and fun for the students. It also taught me ways to make classes more interactive and set up a friendly learning environment. Before these trainings, I didn't know. The tiny little details such as focusing on co-curricular activities, increasing parents' involvement, involvement in the learning process can help retain students in school. These teachers' training courses are compulsory. After completing a grade, before starting a new grade, we receive a six days orientation. And before starting grade four, teachers also get a special subject-based training on mathematics and English. Every month, I attend a refresher course for three to four days, which are conducted by BRAC's master trainers. As far as the general capability of teachers in my area is concerned, most of the teachers who work at the pre-primary schools and madrasa have not received any kind of training. However, government primary teachers receive one-year training, which over the months fades away due to lack of refresher course. After the training, I knew how to manage the class, construct question, take necessary approach for slow learners, and ways to make the class joyful but for understand, but untrained, the teacher, but for untrained teachers, they lack in such knowledge. 
According to 2011 Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics, the national literacy rate is around 51.8%, while Manikganj has a literacy rate of 49.8%. The national primary school certificate pass rate for 2013 in 90, is 98.58%, while for BRAC schools it is 99.99%. Primary school certificate pass rate at BRAC schools in Manikganj is 100%. These numbers are evidence of the difference BRAC is making. With the increase in primary school certificate pass rate, it is so ever important to focus on the second step that is retaining them at secondary school level, which means further increase in spending on education. For better quality of education, it is important that there is equal distribution of teacher within each region. It is also necessary to reduce the teacher-student ratio in the formal sector. With the help of the government and BRAC, the literacy scenario will change in the near future and with further help and involvement from different stakeholders, we will be able to improve the education scenario in Bangladesh. Thank you all for your time. The inspirations continue, and may I request Shafika Ahmed Vardak to please um, come and present her story. And may I request uh, Shafika? Shafika will speak in Pashto or Dari, and we'll have a translate. Dari, and we'll have. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Jalat Mabon, Akayan wa Khanam Ha. Assalamu alaikum. شفیقه احمدی وردک مدیر لیسه ملاله شهر کابل هستم که از پنزه حقوق و علوم سیاسی در سال 1989 فارغ گردیده البته از رشته دپلماسی پهنتون کابل آرزویم کار در رشته تحصیلیم بود که علاقه من کار در وزارت خارجه و بودن دیپلمات در یکی از ممالک خارجی بود اما نظر به مناسبات حاکم در جامعه ما و همچنان نظر به خواست فامیلم ما در یکی از مکاتب ابتدایه خاطر تدریس آموزش و پرورش شاگردای دختر شروع به کار نمودم Honorable Ministers, Ladies and Gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum. I'm Shafiqa Ahmadi Wardak, Principal Madala Girls High School, Kabul, Afghanistan. I graduated from the Faculty of Law and Political Science with a diploma from Kabul University in 1989. I wanted to start off my career at the Foreign Ministry as a diplomat in foreign countries. However, owing to the difficult circumstances in my country and I had hired for my family wishes, I started my work as a primary school teacher. شما متخصصان علوم پیداگوژیک درک می کنید که مدیریت و رهبری مکاتب کار دشوار و طاقت فرسا بوده مخصوصا در افغانستان که مکاتب دو تایم و یا حتی سه تایم می باشد. وظیفه روزمره بعد از آغاز درس کنترل دروس استادان تطبیق اوامر اوامر ارسالی مقام وزارت رسیدگی به ارائز بازدید با مراجعین اولیای شاگردا و رهنمایی به اعضای اداری و تدریسی مکتب می باشد از جمله وظایف مهم یک مدیر در پهلوی برنامه ریزی و سازماندهی خوب کنترل و نظارت امور یومیه علاقمندی خاص دارم و روزانه در هر تایم درسی دو یا سه سنف را عملا نظارت و کنترل می نمایم خوش دارم در سنوف شاگردان جریان درس معلمان سطح آمادگی میتود درسی سمگیری شاگردان در جریان درس یا میتود شاگرد محوری را پرورش دهم Many present here as pedagogical specialists realize well that managing and heading a school is a difficult task especially in Afghanistan where schools are currently operating in three to four shifts. The 23 years of such persistent work in the education sector has confirmed to me that ruling that meaningful routine on a daily basis matters, including a quality teaching process, implementing guidelines for higher authorities, addressing petitions, meeting with the parents of students, and managing the administrative members of school. In addition to the programming improvements, managing daily activities, I also monitor one or two classes daily. My, I personally monitor the teaching learning process of the teachers, their ability to read adaptation of new teaching methods, encouraging student participation and development of student-centered methods. 
آقایان و خانم ها می خواهم کمی بالای انکشافات و دستاوردهای معرف کشور خاصتا وضع مکاتب آموزش دختران که بیبود کیفی در آن به کمک جامعه جهانی رونما گردیده کم مکس نمایم از سال 2008 به سطح کل کشور صرف 6 میلیون طفل که 36 فیصد آن دختر بود در 11991 مکتب از طریق 150 معلم تدریس می گردید ولی تای 6 سال اخیر با گرفتن تصدی رهبری جلالت ما محترم دکتر سی فاروق وردک با جلب حمایت وسیع جامعه جهانی این رقم در سال 2013 به 10.5 میلیون شد شاگرد که 41 فیصد آن را دختران تشکیل می دهد افزایش یافت و تعداد معلمی نیز به 210 هزار نفر که 31 فیصد معلمان مذکوره هم زنا تشکیل می ده و همچنان تعداد مکاتب نیز از 16600 باب مکتب که 1600 باب مکتب رشد را نشان می دهد افزایش یافت I want to shed light on the development and achievements of the education system in my country, especially with respect to the status of education of girls, quality improvements with the cooperation of international community. Prior to the year 2008, only 6 million children, of which 36% were girls, were attending classes in 11,191 schools, and they were taught by 150,000 teachers. However, during the recent six years, through international support, the number of students in 2013 was raised to 10.5 million, of which 41% are girls, and the number of teachers was increased to 2,100,000, of which 31% are female teachers, and the number of schools increased to 16,600. آقایان و خانم ها در زمان حکومت طالبان وقتی دروازه های مکاتب بروی دختران و معلمان اوناس مسدود گردیده بود، من در منزلم پروگرام تدریس برای دختران را آغاز و طی پنج سال تمام برای شاگردان دختر کتابهای مکتب را تدریس می نمودم. با استقرار حکومت جدید در افغانستان من در جمله نخستین معلمان زن بودم که دوباره به مکتب بازگشته و تدریس برای دختران را آغاز نمودم. این درست زمانی بود که والدین کمتر قادر بودند برای دخترانشان البسه و قرطاسه تهیه نماید من توانستم با ارائه کمک به شاگردان غریب و بی‌بزاعت و توزیع قرطاسه با آنها با با خواندن و نوشتن آنها را به مکتب تشویق نمایم و همچنان تلاش کردم با جستجوی محصات خیری بین المللی برای و همچنان دونرها برای تشویقشان در زمین جلب کمکشان را برای توزیع قرطاسیه البسه برای شاگردان بی‌بزاعت و غریب و موانع سر راه مشکلات آموزیشان را برطرف نمایم During the Taliban regime, when the school's doors were closed to girls, I designed a teaching program for girls who I would call girls to my house for lessons. After the establishment of the new government in Afghanistan, I was among the first person, first woman, who was started going back to schools. During the time, families were not able to buy their children school stationery and books, so I was helping them purchase these tools. Following this practice, I started searching for foreign donors to support and help poor children. With this, I motivated and affected their educational life and removed all obstacles from their way to schools. همچنان من می توانم مثال های زیاده از تجارب روزمره کاری ام را در عرصه آموزش دختران، پرابلم ها، مشکلات که روزمره با ایس کندی و موانع سر راه تحصیل دختران در کشور ما می گردد با شما صحبت نمایم. طور مثال گفته می دانیم محدودیت های فامیلی، عروسی های قبل از وقت و ناخواسته، مشکلات اجتماعی، ترانسپورتیشن ضعیف و همچنان محدودیت های وظیفوی بر I can add more examples from my daily life experiences in school. There are many girls, students who have left school because of the following reason. Family restrictions, unwanted marriages, social society problems, bad transport and limited job opportunities. باید گفت که من در جریان وظیفه هم همواره با این چالش ها مواجه بوده که در راه حل آن کار می نمایم چنانچی هستند فامیل هایی که به سواد بوده مانع رفتن دخترانشان به مکتب می شوند و یا هستند فامیل هایی که دخترانشان به مجرد که نوجوان می شوند در تج... عروسی نموده و مانع رفتنشان به مکاتب می شوند
در تجربه مکتب داریم با مثال های زیادی چنین فامیل ها مواجه بوده من والدین و حتی نامزاد و شوهران ای دخترها را به مکاتب خواسته و از طریق پیش برد صحبت ها و تشویق موضوع را حل و فصل نموده تا دخترانشان را دوباره به مکتب بفرست هایی که وقتر آروسی می کنند تفلدار می شوند حامله می باشند و از تحصیل باز می مانند وجود دارد ما برای چنین شاگردان امتحانات اختصاصی سامی را وضع نموده تا در خانه خود درس خوانده و صرف برای سپری کردن امتحان امتحانات مطابق تقسیم قات اینها به مکتب میآیند و در صورت که کامیاب میشن اینها به صنف بالاتر ارتقا میکنن البته در طول یک سال اینها تابع حاضری نمی باشند Early married girls during their pregnancy and later on when they become mothers, they can attend classes. So we have a program which enables them to study at home and at the end of the educational year they participate in exams. Society problems like harassment, not having a good transportation is another challenge on their ways to school. Having these problems in mind, we created a transportation program which, is enable, which enables them to go to schools and their job. باید گفت در پروسه تدریس مکاتب دخترانه معلمان اوناس نیست تأثیر خوب برتقای کیفیت و سطح آموزش شاگردان دختر دارد. زیر شاگردان دختر به صورت کل در همه کشورهای اسلامی و به طور خاص در کشور سنتی و اسلامی ما تا به محدودیت های خاص فرهنگی است که باید رعایت گردد. affects public mentality toward girls' education. We also have excessive cases where educated girls are not allowed to work in government or public agencies. It is a well-established fact that female teachers are more instrumental in upgrading learning of girls, especially in Islamic countries where traditional ways must be managed abiding by the cultural limitations. دوستان دستاوردها و موفقیت های به دست آمده معرف را نمیتان در محدوده وقتی تعیین شده یک یک بیان داشت بلکه با اختنام از فرصت چالش های سر راه تعلیم آموزش دختران در کشورم را با شما صحبت نموده تا با تحلیل و ارزیابی در این سمینار بین المللی راه بیرون رفت به خاطر اصلاح آن را جستجو کرد به نظرم طوری که چند مثال از زندگی روزمره خانم ها را عرض کردم عوامل عدیده مانع انکشاف پیشرفت معرف نوین خاصتا آموزش مکاتب دخترانه را می توان طور زیل مورد بحث قرار داد یک جنگ و ناامنی و دوام نامعلوم آن حملات انتحاری، تهدید و تخویف، کشتن معلمان و سختاندن مکاتب عوامل اصلی تأثیر گذار و ناگوار بر وضع انکشاف و رشد مکاتب دخترانه از خود به جا گذاشته و فامیل ها مانع رفتن دخترانشان به مکاتب می گردن. before teaching and education of girls in our country so that we mobilize solutions at, the, at this international gathering. In my view, the main constraining actors for development of new education, especially teaching at girls' schools, can be summed up in the following lines. Number one, war and insecurity having no end, suicide attacks, threats, killing of teachers, torturing of schools, and many causes impeding progress and growth of girls' schools and the reason that parents are not allowing girls to attend school. After every suicide attack or explosion, we always observe a great decrease in the number of students and are having more absentees. دوم ضعف اقتصادی فقر و بیچارگی فامیل ها خصوصا در ولایت عامل دیگر بازدارنده دسترسی و امکانات در جهت کسب و ارتقای سطح کیفی آموزش و تحصیل بر عموم شاگردا خاصتا آموزش به دختران است زیرا پدران و فامیل ها بنا بر وضع خراب اقتصادی و شمولیت فرزندان پسرشان به مکتب ارجیحت داده و مانع شمولیت و یا هم دوام تحصیل تحصیل دختران شان می شوند بعد از البته بعد از دوره ابتدایه و دخترانشان مانع تدریس شان می شود و اونها را به خانه می شانند economic strains when poverty within the families especially in provinces these parents to prefer enrolling their sons to schools prohibiting their daughters education beyond primary levels مانع دیگر رشد و انکشاف مکاتب دختران در گوشه و کنار کشور ما با ملافه های اجتماعی، فرهنگی، 
فرهنگی فامیل ها و جامعه برمی گردد. امر مسلم است که پسمانی های اجتماعی و فرهنگی باورها و اعتقادات دینی و مذهبی و سنت های حاکم بر قرا و قصبات کشور خاصتا در مناطق جنوب کشور ما مانی جدی سر راه انکشاف مکاتب دخترانه می باشد زیرا تا هنوز در گوشه های کشور ما رفتن دخترانشان را شرم تلقی نموده و دخترانشان را به مکتب اجازه نمی دهد Another obstacle of for progress of girls' schools in different parts of the country emanates from tribal, cultural, and social customs of families, especially in rural areas. These groups, bound by backwardness, religious beliefs, and traditions, especially in the south of the country, inhibit development of girls' schools, considering girls' enrollment in schools as a source of shame. چهارم ساختار قبیلوی ذهنیت مخالف با معرف بیشتر با حیات زندگی روستایی انعنات و رواج های بومی و قبیلوی عدم رشد فرهنگ و چسبیدن به رواج ها و سنن قدیم مانع دیگر بازدارنده انکشاف مکاتب دخترانه در افغانستان می گردد. In my view, many families in my country either prevent enrollment of their daughters to school or they encourage them to enter into marriage after completion of fifth grade and they may prevent them to continue education. This has led to almost 85% of women in Afghanistan being deprived of education. به نظرم اغلب فامیل ها در کشور ما یا مانع شمولیت دخترانشان به مکتب می گردد و یا هم بعد از خواندن دوره ابتدایه در سن بسیار خرد دخترانشان را مجبور به ازدواج و عروسی نموده و از تحصیل آموزش باز می ماند. روی همین ملحوظ است که بیش از 85 فیصد جمعیت زنان افغانستان از نعمت خواندن و نوشتن محروم هستند. Afghanistan is an, Islamic, is an Islamic country and Islamic beliefs from the basic part of their social and cultural identity, different interpretations and often incorrect inclusions about Islam drawn by some circles and groups have further embedded girls' education. These arguments are... Char, char. These arguments are tools at the hands of enemies of Islam who are per purposely preventing growth of education in their own country, especially promotion of girls' education. They have forgotten that Islam as a religion has obligated both men and women to receive education without discrimination. I would like to end with a line uh, with the hope that knowledge overwhelms ignorance. Thank you very much. We need uh, a huge round of applause for these magicians that make learning possible against all kinds of adversities. Um, so a big round of applause to our teachers. We come to the end of the program and I would like very much, you know, for um, uh, closing remarks. And what we have now is closing remarks by Mr. Ahmed Bakshleri and followed by the launch of the report and three to four questions from the media. So we're just there now. It is my pleasure to be a part of UNESCO GMR launching ceremony. Education has now become a global requirement for every human being on the planet, and lack of ed education has become a point of concern for all. UNESCO being the torch bearer of promotion of education has been genuinely sharing its global con uh, concerns with uh, the uh, other countries. The initiatives like MDGs, EFAs, coupled with constitutional and legal provisions uh, in, uh, in Pakistan, require an effective monitoring system. GMR publishes evidence-based reports periodically and provides an analytical basis for the effective policy reforms, emerging challenges, and the best practices for various dimensions of education policies and practices. Ladies and gentlemen, the geopolitical conditions in this region pose serious threats in achieving MDGs and EFA goals. We are likely to miss some of the targets in this regard by the end of 2015. A critical analysis of our plans and strategies is essential to improve our future plans, and we are in process of carrying out this review so that we can focus on future events. It is needless to say here that delivery of quality education can be achieved only through addressing the supply side constraints and as such, the actions of the government may be meaningless if the, demands, if the demand side constraints are not adequately addressed. 
All these stakeholders need to work together in harmony with each other to bring about positive changes. The in, this entails close coordination and cooperation between government organizations, civil society, parents, teachers, students, local leaders, and education, education experts. The Ministry of Education, Training, and Standards in Higher Education has taken initiatives and provided a platform for this wide range consultative process during the preparation of National Action Plan. In the end, I urge that for an effective change in education sector, the need and importance of regional cooperation must be ensured. The Ministry of Education, Training and Standards of Higher Education is endeavoring to promote education with the help of our development partners and world community as a large. I wish you all best and thank for honoring Pakistan for this region, uh, regional launch and hope that our mutual concerns will help us for this noble cause. I thank distinguished delegates from different uh, parts of the country and world who had graced this occasion and made this launch a memorable event. I thank Idare Talim Wagahi for arranging and organizing this function. And I hope that this launch will help us to move uh, forward. Thank you very much. May I request the panel to rise with their books and if they can hold them. And can I request the two honorable ministers to declare the report launched with pledges for tremendous regional cooperation to form a pool and a platform for assessments and quality so that the entire region can share the best and daring practices from the field. Sir, you have to declare. I think this is a great occasion for the region because this will inform so many practices. And may I now request, and can uh, ministers, if you all sit down, we can only take three to four questions um, right at the back. Can somebody first at the back? And can you please share with us your name and the media house you're representing? Can you speak loudly? Uh, first of all, we don't find much about Pakistan in this report. But uh, there is a uh, reference of this report that 26 students of private schools in Red Bible even from the center. So, uh, what, is, what steps are going to be to raise the level of education in Pakistan, especially primary education in Pakistan? Very sir, you respond. Uh, as I was discussing, and all the uh, other uh, colleagues from Pakistan discussing, that we have prepared a national plan of action which not only caters for the missing facilities, it will also caters for the improvement of quality of education. Mike. We have entered Mike. into uh, arrangements that by Mike. 2018, Mike. Mike. our new, new recruit, the recruitments in the schools will be by an uh, amount the uh, people who are either uh, degree or diploma holders in education. So I do feel that with the passage of time, when we increase the spending on education, as the honorable minister said, that we are going to enhance the spending from two percent of our GDP to four percent, it is hoped that we will be able to do <coughs> both quality and quantity aspects in education. Thank you. Um, Inayatullah, sir, can you just... Kind presentation, a lot of very useful information given to us, but we are back at square one. Uh, when we talk about teachers, we totally forget the adult literacy 
poor, poor he paid, carrying a tremendous burden and very little said about that poor little teacher in the village who had to carry the whole responsibility of the second in 2025 uh, village visited women in the So I would like to read the quote a little about that very poor deprived affected the point that I want to make after the presentation is that it's all right to tell us that we are not doing very well. But somebody should tell us why is it that Pakistan is not doing that well. We have the minister and the secretary. Why is it that we are lagging behind the rest of the world? What is it that we are wanting to do? We are the same we are Thank you. Uh, may I just request uh, Manos uh, to talk about the issue and the challenges of adult literacy as has been highlighted in the report um, and particularly with respect to teachers working in the area of literacy. And Farida wants to say, say a few words and then maybe G. Manos. Thank you. Uh, it's true in the, in the report we do identify and I didn't mention that in my presentation given the, the pressure of time that adult literacy is the uh, biggest goal in education for a goal that has perhaps achieved least progress. Um, and that is particularly disappointing. Uh, I, I, I think if I were to quote the precise number, between 2000 and 2011, the number of literate adults fell by only 1%. 1%. Percent. And um, in, in India, for example, it didn't uh, fall at all. Um, the reasons for that, of course, are multiple. Um, I think uh, the report believes that generally adult literacy uh, has not achieved, has not received the attention it deserves. Um, it's true that in, in our report, we also don't look specifically on the issue of the adult literacy teacher. Um, it's true that we see what is it possible to do now, because we identify and we focus on the large number of young literacy which uh, that should have been a problem that should have been uh, resolved already, but actually it's going to stay with us. I think we have a, a quote in the report, uh, a statistic that is of particular interest, that uh, we would not expect in low-income countries um, youth literacy, young females to be fully literate until the 2080s, uh, more than two generations from now. So I think that partly justifies uh, why we have not focused specifically on the issue of the adult education teacher. Um, but it's true, and uh, perhaps I should give that uh, uh, opportunity for others to speak, it is true that new approaches, fresh approaches, are required because established programs do not yet tackle this issue sufficiently. Um, Farida wants to say something, and it's a uh, Balego uh, Raman. Yeah, later. I'm just giving you a parallel in India because this was for also the state of India some years back. And uh, I think what the need of the art is that whether one can have a mission saying education for all. And uh, have a movement that all, all adults, we have to group them up into 16 to 20, 25 plus, 35 plus, because it's like a vicious circle. You know, you have children who drop out now, they, are, they, they become your adult illiterate. So you have, we all have a backlog of illiterate. We'll have to have a scheme, a movement saying that illiterates will have to be taught. And my submission to this August House is, I may be completely wrong, but in India, only government will, did not help. Okay, it was the volunteers, young volunteers from colleges, schools, and from the communities who were educated, who took it upon themselves to educate their village, educate their mothers. And finally, I just want to say the one way of doing it is also that we do have preschool programs here, we have, you know, school programs here. So one of the catchment uh, area is to have parents of these children getting into the education uh, program. So there is an incentive that my child is learning, I'm also learning. 
some of these things have uh, worked, but there is a political will. Thank you for those comments on social movement and synergies between early years and literacy, Dr. Kim, and then finally, uh, Dr. Mr. Bali Oraman. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Just quickly, uh, I, ju I just want to echo uh, the colleague from India who said, I think the government alone cannot address this issue. To my knowledge, in this region, Asia Pacific, the one of the main reasons for this, uh, uh, the rather low performance when it comes to the leases because if you look at the, uh, the common policies in any member state in Asia Pacific, typically this adaptive literacy, your excellence, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, uh, I, or rather sidelined because the schooling for any school <coughs> population is so immense. So unless they uh, address this uh, school aspect properly, I mean, uh, although they may have the will, it may be difficult for this uh, governments to address the other literacy, especially for countries where the population are rather young. On the other hand, some countries in the Pacific, in Asia Pacific, where population is aging, and these are becoming more of an issue, policy issue, and then and more from the government is going to uh, address education and learning. In terms of uh, practical uh, approach, to adult literacy, I think the common approach in many parts of Asia, particularly in countries in what we call the Kong area, including the Thailand, Vietnam, you will know that there are many community-based learning centers, what we call CLCs, which uh, some of these centers are financed out of government support, but mostly some community-based uh, voluntary uh, this is one modality that many countries in the region are using. Another is use of technology, because conventional approach may not be with conventional approach may, may not be a, uh, you know, rich, unreached or hard to hard to reach population. So use of technology, I think His Excellency the Minister mentioned this in his speech, would be another approach. And indeed, many countries are already adopting this approach. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kim. And finally, Dr. Bali Guruman. Dr. Bali Guruman, sir. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Bali Guruman. Thank you. Uh, regarding uh, adult literacy, I did mention in my speech as well that uh, Prime Minister's uh, literacy movement is on the cards. It will be launched pretty soon, inshallah. And, and that will uh, particularly focus on adult literacy as well. Uh, regarding what went wrong and why we uh, have not been able to increase the number from uh, well up to 4% and why we have been hearing all this, I did not want to go into any details regarding the past and give the future uh, path of action what we intend to do. Uh, but well, uh, let me throw a few numbers uh, that are self-explanatory and they speak volume actually. In 1998 perhaps, the, in Pakistan, the uh, percentage of spending on education as uh, in terms of GDP was 2.65%. And that was the time when Mia Nawashi was Prime Minister. And he was uh, in his third year of, uh, or in fact second year of uh, uh, governance and it was planned to take it further on. But in 2001, when uh, perhaps when Musharraf was uh, the chief executive, mm -hmm. it came down to 1.6%. Mm -hmm. And from 1.6%, mm -hmm. now we are hardly mm -hmm. at 2%. So that's very shameful, in fact. Uh, but at the same time, at the moment when we are at 2%, we are spending around 8.5% of our, uh, we are actually collecting only 8.5% of GDP as tax. So we need to have serious uh, tax uh, improvements in that <coughs> regard. And again, let me uh, tell you, let me inform you that at that time in the regime in 1989, the test to GDP ratio was 13.5%. So 
So what went wrong? All of us know very well. Why people could not be taxed, the wealthy could not be taxed, why uh, they were uh, to be pleased, but if some uh, premier is doing something wrong, some premier is avoiding the law and constitution, so that probably was the reason. But still, that's a long story. Uh, taxation, improving it, and improving the economy is again a challenge for the government, and government is doing its best to improve that. At the moment, when we speak it, of it as now, if we are only taxing 8.5% of the GDP, and if around 2% is being spent on education, that means around quarter of the whole revenues is being spent on education, which in fact is very good if you look at that perspective. But 8.5% is not acceptable at all. So we are we are going in, in for the revenue. So but what? Uh, we are planning on in increasing that. You, you asked about the total uh, spending on the, uh, uh, the total spending on education when we speak of going to four percent. So that's why I was explaining all that. Thank you. As we come to the end, I think what is left for us from the takeaways of the Global Monitoring Report 2013 and 14 is that, and what we heard from the region, is that nothing short of social movements, community engagement, and government commitment, and we see a very open talk amongst government on the challenges that they face, but also some strategies to overcome. So there's a lot of work to be done but a lot of collaboration within the region and really walking the talk between all the partners who were here today for education, I think is going to change things. On that, I would like to request also the governments who are here to be able to respond to the challenges as presented by the Global Monitoring Report, Teaching and Learning, Achieving Quality for All, um, as soon as they can, because that will inform the actions for the years ahead and especially up till 2014 and post-2015. I think we've all earned our lunch. A big round of applause for everyone here. And may we invite you on behalf of UNESCO, GMR, and Idara Tali Muagai to please join us for lunch. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Very good facilitation.